for free and you'll give so much content out that it'll bring in so many extra people like give it away yeah it's, if you've got if you've got a kid who share, who likes rugby league sharing on his instagram and there's 200 schoolmates who might not necessarily like rugby league see uh, even just just a guy doing a, a goofball kicking kind of thing kick crossbar challenge type thing or even just actually training like you say to kick goals properly there's there's right. there's things in that yeah we've got a co- other couple of tweets that we we've not got to yet so let's run these off because i think they are interesting this one um i would guess had a tongue th- firmly in the cheek but it does raise some interesting uh points because making stars isn't necessarily just about uh making them superstars making them media personalities isn't just about necessarily all the positive side of things and genghis campbell at genghis campbell said some ideas for how we can raise the the individual players profiles he said walk onto the field like rick flair take a knee during the anthem doom skank after a try i don't know what doom skank is trash talk the opposition before and after a game and kidnap the other yes. team's mascot basically act like wcw just after ted turner took it over <laughs> but without the steroids i love it i love i agree with that i actually do. I don't believe that you should be a jackass for no reason, but if you're a natural jackass allow that person to be that way as the game's kicking off because people will watch that like people watch mike tyson right like i mean he was a tragedy in in a set of gloves and like before you watched him because you were like somebody's gonna die he's gonna kill him when he hits him and then you watched him because you're like oh, i just got out of jail what's he gonna do and then he chewed a guy's ear off then he got a face tattoo then he went insane in the interviews <laughs> like it was a whole process but people watched all the way through if you have the mike tyson of rugby league let him be himself let him be the guy Connor or zach hardaker there you go. Let them be themselves. I love Zach Hardaker. Uh, I love that guy. Like, I think it's great. Like, have that kind of guy do his thing. Yeah. I think it's... You need your heroes and you need your, your villains and you need your sort of characters on on, yeah. each, on on every side of it to become kind of stars. I mean, I suppose, um, tell me another... Uh, tell me another ice skater that had a, a biopic made about them other than tanya harding tanya harding and she was hated <laughs> still is in many ways yeah. but she's just now on celebrity shows again in america so she's she's, she's she gotten sells. she's got her brand back out there for being a villain she sells yeah she sells that's why like it's like it's very like to me that's very simple allow these allow the knuckleheads to be knuckleheads and get the attention from it and then spin it the right way you need to like it's like it's that's free to get you know, like the super league doesn't have to try rfl doesn't have to try they just get that by letting people be themselves they don't have to pay for it this is this is back to that point of train them how to use their platforms but don't mm-hmm. prevent them from using them as themselves that we that yeah. we talked about before mark butler at mark butler 1978 said internationals 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 it's going a bit tony blair there isn't it with uh <laughs> um, if the day ever comes that most games are televised letting one go free to air was what what we should do and sorry to say this but that the game needs to go for an increased profile with an acknowledgement that you probably can't have an, a fire level superstar again he, he says to explain that point there's nothing joe root can do to be on the level with 80s cricketers that uh, with that the 80s cricketers were and that extends to most sports that aren't football uh, like soccer so it's it's kind of comes full round full full uh comes round sort of full circle on what we've been talking about doesn't it a bit tim but um do you feel like even if we can't get in a fire level superstar again it doesn't mean that making stars even temporary stars of our talented players doesn't then raise the profile of a gate of the game because of that yeah well i think as a central point that we come back to the players are the biggest asset. Let's get the most out of them. And one of the things we need to do is when we get a player, say, on question of sport or or whatever, make the most out of it. Build the profile internally. Get all the rugby league people to tune in. And if you then build it as a big block audience that will be loyal and, you know, train our own audience. Say, look, if you click on a story, that's good. You know, the longer you spend on it, the longer you read on it, that that's from a media perspective that's really good if we educate our own people like that and that drives up so if, if suddenly yeah. you say oh i did a rugby league story last week i got three times the hits i would have done on a cricket story 
well, wh- which way is the editor going to go the next week? And that then builds a virtuous circle. So when we get people onto Love Island or something, get everybody bringing in, voting in for them. Well, we have, so I, a... you know, we, we have to get behind it as much as you can have the ideas and the creation come from the top, but everybody else has then got to follow. Yeah, so Wigan-based former athlete Jenny Meadows was on Celebrity Mastermind recently, and her chosen specialist subject was the Challenge Cup from 1990 to to the present day. Um, And I would guess the other people that were on the show, I would guess there was less sharing of their upcoming appearance on the show amongst their audiences there was like a baker some guy i'd never even seen or heard of before and some um guy off of a celebrity antiques show or something like that right (laughs) so i'm guessing that they didn't couldn't push out to the same audience that if rugby league made that combined effort of everyone saying hey let's tell everyone that someone's going to be answering questions about rugby league on tv tonight and play along with it and that sort of stuff. We could have done. And how, yeah, and we'll have you know competition of how how many did you get at home? Tweet us, and then we'll pick. You know, the winner will get a free shirt or whatever. Yeah, or get the chance to do a lap of the Robin Park Stadium with Jenny Meadows or something. So then you're bringing it back to that that sport too. So then you then you're bringing in two audiences there: rugby league and athletics audiences, for example. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Nate, do you think the maybe the era of the pure superstar itself has possibly passed rugby league by a little bit now but do you still think that doesn't mean that making these guys stand out even if it is just for a moment in time um does help ultimately raise the profile of the game to where we want it to be i don't know that the superstar thing has passed them by i think you use whoever right so let's say I, 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 let's say this year, let's say this year some guy plays for um, Witness. They went down, right? So let's say somebody plays for Witness this year, and they're a friggin' amazing, like, 18, 19, 20-year-old, right? Let's and they're say just Ashall Bart. Okay, there you like go. That, yeah. All right, so let's let's say he plays out of his mind, right? And he plays incredible, but what I'm getting at is, like, let's say he doesn't do anything outside the game. He's, not a, he's a quiet guy. He doesn't like to talk about himself or anything else. But he's a really, really great guy player on the field let's say that guy then gets picked up by you know wigan warrington st helens leeds whoever you know castle for doesn't matter he gets picked up by that and he is a true stud on the field he is still not the guy like he is still not viable in my mind as the person that is going to bring people to the game he is what you're going to watch once you get to the game so you don't like you can have both you can have the guy on the field that is quiet he's the general on the field and he's super quiet and he doesn't talk but when he gets on the field he's who you watch like you don't care about him off the field you don't even know he exists but once he's playing meanwhile he's got a teammate that's like a little chihuahua and he just never shuts up and he yaps and yaps and yaps all day long off the field that guy is just as important so both guys are just as important once you get to the game and you turn it on it can't be a trash game it's got to be a good game and you got to have great players and so you can focus on the superstar on game day you can bring in the guy that talks all the time and you can talk about him a little bit in the pregame but then once the game starts you can just focus on that superstar your announcers and everything else and it's a coordinated effort it's hey who's the announcer so like here's a good example um this is kind of letting the cat out of the bag a little bit right so when we had the world cup qualifiers um uh, we had the World Cup qualifiers. America played Jamaica. We're playing that game, and I'm just, I'm, I'm commentating and doing my part, and we're just, ha- we're having a lot of fun, right? And it was a great game. It was exciting to be a part of. After the game, one player took advantage of that. Jamil Robinson is one of our American players. He went back and he had somebody cut out every single piece where one of us said his name, and he made a highlight out of that. <laughs> Put that on Instagram, and that. And that pushed even further. Like he's like that was that was genius. He went through and found every single place that somebody said his name and made a video of himself with that, and then all these big tackles and everything else and put it out there. And that went all across the place. It went across all the social media. Maybe that got him five extra followers, but it got him extra. Like it was just smart. It was like oh here's a here's a chance to capitalize. It's the same thing. Like that's just intelligent branding of your own personal brand. And it wasn't like planned i didn't know he was going to make those tackles when he made them i just said his name and then he took the time to go back and shred that out that was that was intelligent like more people know yeah. about him because and actually that say at the same 
uh, time, I think there's possibly some missed opportunities that came out of that. I mean, your bit yeah. that you did with um, was it Jamel Cole? No, was who was the who was the player who swore <laughs> in the video you did? Oh, oh my God! Yeah, yeah. Um, um, uh, Brown. You talking about Brown? Was it Lamont Bryant? Yeah, it was Lamont Bryant. Brian. Brian. Yeah. Sorry. Not <laughs> so. Brian. Yeah. So, for example, like we're even struggling to remember his his name now, but at the time I thought that was absolutely hilarious, and that was the kind of stuff that you could get like people buying into. Obviously, not a young yeah. audience, but a teenager and above audience, you can get them buying into that sort of passion, that sort of enthusiasm. I mean, he was just he was just laughing with disbelief and had no control of his own mind or senses about what they'd just achieved. And that's, that's the sort of thing that makes them relatable, that could have got out there, could have got more viral. If, like, if, you know, the, the effort you're putting in, imagine if it was just amplified a little bit more that someone, another level up from us guys who just talk about the game we love, so, took seriously. Do, do you know what I mean? And- yeah, I do. And Tim, I'm curious to know what you think about this. So in my mind, the biggest miss, even more than like an Oliver Gilder, what I said before, you just brought it up, Lamont Bryan, uh, Ashton, uh, Ashton Golding's another perfect example. Like, uh, you know, Ross Peltier who plays for Bradford, all these different guys, like the biggest miss so far. Now it went all over the place on social media, but the biggest miss by like the Super League and by Rugby League World Cup, they need to push even more. They should be following the Jamaican stars. They should be following the Jamaican yeah. players. And if they used – like, so I'm a big fan of something, you know, for, find a niche audience and go after that, right? And so – well, it's, twofold, it's twofold with that because you've not only got the yeah. Jamaican audience, you've also got the British Jamaican and the yes. British Heritage audience. And that then brings another group in and say, look, we've got all these guys of Jamaican heritage who've come through over here. They're playing our sport. That also links to the London thing. That's a really big thing that you can sell. You've Where also you've got, got those, that fact that these, almost... these are real. You've got a range as well, aren't you, Tim? Within these blokes, you've got professionals who are at the top of. Yeah. The, you know, you've got twenty try season Ben Jones Bishop. Then you've got has to work as a personal trainer during most days. Everyone who plays for the London Scholars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you got you know you got Aaron Jones Bishop who works as a doorman. Yeah, nicest guy, one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Absolutely hilarious. You put a camera in front of AJB, and you just you wouldn't be able to hold the camera still because you'd be laughing because he's a really really funny guy. But does anybody really know that? No, because not most people haven't seen him as up close as I have, for example. But Nate, that's a great idea. It's a story that can be followed. Yeah, it's yeah. those those sorts of things, and it, 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 you almost need a, you know, a bunch of people sit in a room, creative people to say, right, what are the what are the stories we could get, and where, and how do we follow those, how do we track those, and then you know we have to build it ourselves and say, right, the easiest story out there, Tim, that you and Mark that you guys could follow, like all the way to twenty twenty one, because you know it's going to last all the way to then. You could follow the Jamaican players. And, and I'm not being mean when I say this because they're new to the party. They're yeah. cheap yeah. investment. So because of that, you could follow the guys on the island, the guys that are over in England. You could do that audience. You got a g- gigantic Jamaican audience in America. You could geo lock that over, all over social media to this region if you wanted. You could push that everywhere and you could make that. Uh, like you could take the Jamaican story and make that a a documentary if you wanted that you could push out the beginning of 2021, but you could use that for the next couple of years. The, tr- the 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 journey of the Jamaican rugby league team, like, and you could use every single player involved. You have them right in your backyard. You could go to the neighborhoods. Like there's a Jamaican restaurant right next to me. Like I could go down there right now, tell them, let them see the highlights, and do a quick minute there. They probably give me a you know some free food. Like, like you could do anything you want with that section. This is yeah, what I mean, this whole hour has been about, hasn't it, Nate? Getting you some free Jamaican. As, as I said, it, that's probably what I'm going to try to go do is get some free Jamaican food. So that's actually a genius <laughs> idea. But no, I mean, that's I mean, like that's the best story in rugby league, and you could run that for the next couple of years. No, exactly. I think I think that's a great idea. Like, let's just finish off this chat then. Um, if you guys have got any more ideas my main one was get youtubers involved that's all i've got that's all that's all i've got really after what we've talked about that's where i'm at now what about you guys tim what about with your background sort of um what what other ideas do you think are out there that can push the profile of our players i think the way the way we need to fit is the mindset within the game and making sure 
that when we've got something, we don't compete with ourselves. I think that's the biggest mentality shift. If you think of all the things where 